Good afternoon. And welcome once again to Music as Sanctuary. So today is our 16th concert in this series, which is not a particularly round number, but I thought it was worth mentioning. So we've survived 16 concerts. Hopefully we'll survive this one. I'm pretty sure we will one way or the other, but we're gonna need your help, which I'll discuss with you in just a few moments. So it's good to have you with us. Thank you, welcome once again. As always, at the end of our concerts, we like to offer some hospitality in the curry room, which you can find by going through this exit, exit sign there. Hang a right when you get into the uh, Grant Hall lobby, and at the end of the hall, the curry room, you'll find some delicious. Today's soup is Tom Yum soup, a beautiful Thai soup. Um, we discuss the ingredients of this soup, uh, Patricia and I, um, at extreme length yesterday. So a lot of thought has gone into this one. So I absolutely hope that you'll join us for the soup. It's always a pleasure to visit with you and to share food and friendship. Coming up a little bit later in this series, uh, we have quite a variety of music coming up. Next Tuesday, I will be playing some organ music for Epiphany, including works by Bach, Mendelssohn, Durafle, Messiaen, and a new work by Montreal composer Joel Peters. So it's going to be great to offer that music. And two weeks hence, we have uh, some very special guests coming. Kathleen Radke, soprano, Ian Sabaran, countertenor, Carrie Bercy, tenor, Alistair Campbell, baritone. We're going to be offering the canticle Benj Benjamin Britten, two of them anyway, Abraham and Isaac, and the Journey of the Magi. Great works by Britten. And then we've got a, a bunch of really excellent concerts set up for February as well, so I commend all of those to you. Eva is here with us from Montreal, where she's a student at McGill University, but um, has been making music in this city for a very, very long time. Associate Director of Chaley's, close personal friend of mine, and an esteemed, valued colleague. And Eva has curated for us this afternoon a program called Meditations on Common Praise. Yeah, I was going to say prayer, but yeah, it is prayer, but also praise. So when we sing our praises, we often do that in the form of hymnody, and that's what we're going to be doing today. Eva's going to be offering some insights on the theology of these hymns and also uh, on the theological threads between them. So the narrative will be something that you can participate in fully with your voices. So we don't often have the audience singing along in these concerts, but today is an exception. So uh, for your benefit in the program, the hymn melodies are there, and what will generally happen is that we'll introduce the hymn instrumentally uh, before we all join in singing it. There's, I think, one exception, which is just a solo performance of a hymn, but the others are to be shared with you. Uh, remain seated for those. It doesn't need to be like in a church service, but do uh, participate uh, enthusiastically if you are able. So I'm going to turn things over now to Eva. Welcome to all of you, and thank you for being with us again. And please offer a warm welcome to our guest artist this afternoon. Today's presentation will explore the theme of fatherhood and faith. Everyone has a different relationship with their father. Maybe you feel that you've had a wonderful relationship with him. Maybe you feel that you've had multiple supportive fathers. Maybe you have experienced a lacking presence of fatherhood in your life, or a lack of connection with him. Maybe you feel resentment towards your father, or maybe you've come to be at peace with his errors. Whatever the case may be, no human father is perfect. Today we invite you to reflect on earthly fatherhood and join us in rejoicing the certainty that we can all find the perfect father in heaven, in God. I will be a father to you and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. We begin here and will explore this theme further through music and scripture. Our presentation is titled Meditation on Common Praise because we have chosen hymns that relate to our themes and connect to each other. Join us in taking this time to reflect and praise. 
Let the music help you find comfort in knowing that we are all God's children and that he cares deeply for each one of us. So many of the ideas I'm going to be discussing and singing today, uh, I've gotten from various sermons I've heard, various workshops, um, and I didn't want to put like a quote or a citation for every single one. So if you're curious about a specific one, you can just come talk to me after and I'll tell you where that idea came from. We have chosen specific verses of hymns we would like to highlight and invite you to use the bolded words below to help us do that by singing. In the Gospel of John, Jesus says, I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. We remember truth once spoken, love passed on through act and word. You can sing. Every person lost and broken wears the body
his final wish was that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us, one as we are one. I in them and you in me. ourselves. Which of you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? If we have some in natural inclination of generosity toward our children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? For the next hymn, I think we can attempt a round. We'll sing the first verse and chorus together. And then starting in the second verse, if everyone on this side of those microphones could start right away, and everyone on this side could wait for them to sing the verse, and when they go to the second chorus, we'll sing verse two. And the great thing about this hymn is whatever you sing, it will sound good. <laughs>
one more chorus. From the fullness of his grace, we have all received one blessing after another. no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you also an heir. We may think of inheritance as something that falls into our lap, something that we get, like money or property. However, being an heir or receiving inheritance often comes with responsibility, like inheriting a family business. The responsibility that comes with inheriting God's kingdom is to share goodness and loving kindness with our neighbors.
Be Thou My Vision is a hymn that talks about receiving the grace of God as something we can freely consume. But we are reminded that a gift freely given is a gift shared, not only with one another, but from us back to God. Just as God has blessed us, so we are called to bless God in return. And those blessings are themselves waves of grace as surely as the tides come to the land. I hope you enjoy this next hymn as much as I do. It's one of my favorite hymns. <laughs> We must surrender ourselves to God and have faith that he will help us. The line that strikes me the most personally in the next hymn is, what needless pains we bear. Things won't always be easy, and there is always suffering and conflict going on in the world. However, we do not need to suffer alone. God is always with us, and he will help us carry our burdens and ease our pain.
American composer of devotional poetry and music, and his legacy was very broad. While some of his hymns have been known and shared by congregations for 150 years, the tune Beach Spring has only more recently become known, and here it complements the beautifully expressive words by Albert Bailey, which come to us from the evangelical Lutheran tradition. Oh, 
prodigal son to instill in us the depth of our father's love and how he feels about us. The story is not primarily about the prodigal. It is about the father's heart from Luke's gospel. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. This is the kind of father we have in heaven. This is how he feels about us. And this is the purpose for which Christ came.
did not wander off. In the same way, your Father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should be lost. This is the relationship that God provides, and his grace includes us all. Thank you. 
singing and coming. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. Please join us in the curry room for soup and fellowship. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming.